First, let's go over the obvious. Yeah, the budget woes, I think, are starting to show themselves because, yeah, uh, they, and I think they did re reuse the same render for the scorpion coming down the wall and looking up at the thing. And it's also rather glaring. You know, the, the, the CGI is not quite as finished as they, were, as they were earlier. And I think... They need to start you know, embrace the fact you're you're not going to be as big a budget show because you blew it all in the first two episodes. So it's like embrace the low budget and stop going for the big elaborate aliens for a while. Okay, just accept. Go for a humanoid in a funny costume. Okay, and something a little more conventional because they're trying to have their cake and eat it too here. They're trying to still be the big budget thing, but it's like they're not. They're not going to. They're not going. Because another thing about when you start getting your budget cut, it forces you to write your way out of the situation. And I think this time it's starting to make things. Yeah, they had to figure out a situation instead of just coming to a big CGI shoot 'em up. And this one seemed a little better thought out, I think, but it was still it still smacks of the you know it's Doctor Who and the Magic School Bus, you know. So, oh, let's go meet Te Monicola Tesla and Thomas Edison, and it, it'll be a corker, kids. Come on, you'll love it. You know, we get to see what a brat bastard Thomas Edison was, and what a brilliant person Nikola Tesla was. Speaking of which, they kind of skipped over a bit of his history, because yeah, the, the money, but he he did get some investors, namely the guy by the name of Westinghouse. That's why the country is wired for AC. Because Westinghouse backed Tesla for in fact the processor is called Westin Westinghousing. And that's what helped AC power spread throughout the thing and because a little something they also didn't cover. They should have just spent a couple of minutes on it. Uh, why AC and DC don't it didn't work too much. DC is for batteries, you know, it's because but DC power on a large scale, like a town you would have to have power plants every couple of miles because DC has a very short range. AC, however, you can push pretty much indefinitely because you've got little, little cycles going and they kind of build up. And that's why AC took off because you could have one power plant power an entire city. A few cities, in fact, you know, if you got a big enough plant. And that's why that worked, and why you know, and again, for a while, Tesla was rolling it. Okay, he and he was able to do a lot of the work he did because he had that Westinghouse money. They should have touched on that a little bit, okay? Instead of just making it sound like, oh, you'll be in the, you'll be in the, you know, the poorhouse for a while in the next week. No, he 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 was, he was just starting at that point in the show. And in fact, you know, he moved the op, you know, operations to Colorado Springs and got all kinds of weird things. And I wish they'd touched a little more on the nature of the rivalry between Edison and Tesla instead of just being, well, Tesla's a good guy and Edison's a bastard and just accept it. And gone into some of the stuff they pulled back then. Instead of wasting time with the big, you know, evil scorpion lady, which they couldn't even, you know, again, they did, it looks like they didn't even finish the makeup around her eyes and stuff, so, you know, you want, it's, it's, it's kind of slipshod. So if you're going to do that, just Go with something simple that you can finish. I don't know. It's you need writers who know not just the genre, but they also know the property. They know Doctor Who. Because the, any show, you gotta have a, you know, a feel for the characters and a feel for the for the setting. And I'm, it's not my favorite with the, all the dark setting because it, it's usually when they get really dark lighting, it's like he's going to trying to hide just how slipshod the production really is. And I think that it's why they're doing the TARDIS the same way because you don't want to see just how ugly that interior is. And it comes and, and the, the TARDIS interior should have some kind of reflection of the Doctor, and this does not fit her at all. I wonder what the hell were they thinking when they get this kind of you know dark you know brooding type of thing and and you know and Jody is like you know little Miss Sunshine everywhere it's like this, this doesn't match okay 
So, you know, if anything, this this sort of better fit for Chris Eccleston. He was a bit of a downer, but even then, it's too dark for him. You know, we saw what his looked like. So, no. They, this show needs a serious rethink, and the, the beauty of Doctor Who is, yes, they can recover from this. So they get, get a decent showrunner in there and the right lead playing the Doctor and some writers, and you can turn this around. This will just be a, a bad dream, you know. I mean, personally, I do kind of like the idea of uh, giving Paul McGann a shot. And let's just, you know, let's take a break from the next regeneration. And let's go back a ways and give his doctor a, a fair shot. Because we've seen, we've only seen him twice on screen. Maybe, you know, you want to save time in the writing department, do some live action reenacting of the of some of the big finish audios. They're canon anyway, so might as well see him in person and see him in live action. And what do you mean they're canon? Yeah, when uh, Night of the Doctor as he's about to regenerate he's calling out all these you know names of you know past companions you figure that they're all from the big finish audio dramas so yeah uh moffat canonized the <laughs> the big finish audio when what is those so but everyone's you know this will be good i think at some point, someone's got to start realizing at the BBC that this isn't working. Actually, I think they're, they're the current head of the BBC is stepping down, so they're looking for a new guy. So, hope, you know, it could be a you know, change in approach and attitude to him coming in soon. So we'll see what happens on that. Anyway, with that in mind, uh, I was going to personally I'll say the personal things for another time, another update here. So. PayPal, Patreon down below. Uh, mailbox for now is still Captain Robert April, 4046 North Goldenrod Road, number 115, Winter Park, Florida, 32792. And I think we will... Uh... <laughs>